Triunfo is a village uh, that is far away from the, city, from the city of Guatemala. And Triunfo is a small town with approximately 900 people. So it's a very poor village. Triunfo is located right on the west coast of Guatemala. Almost 100% of the villagers are earning their money by growing by hand their own crops, uh, mostly corn, uh, sesame seed, and the rest is, is pasture if they're lucky to, enough to have a cow. They'll pasture them out on, on the grass. There are about 10 families here that try to earn their living from fishing, uh, either swimming out into the ocean or fishing out of the lagoon, but the vast majority are farmers. There's an average of five children in each family. A, a lot of different generations living together where often the uh, grandparent is living with the family. One of the things that's probably most disturbing is that you don't see many old people. Uh, there are a few but not a lot of life expectancy I don't think past about the age of 40. Guatemala Hope started about four years ago as an offshoot from our refugee committee at St. John's Parish. Uh, we recognized that one of our refugee families was having a lot of difficulty in Canada and was very homesick to come back to Triunfo to visit her family. I came back to visit my parents and when I came here I have a lot of friends and neighbors and they, they know me since I was a little girl and when I came here they started to ask me for help because there was a lot of needs, like a lot of children sick, they were a lot dying because they didn't have food, they, they were sick, they needed money for medicines. And I didn't know what to, to tell the people, I just say, I will help you. I didn't know at that point how I was going to help them because to help a whole village, it takes a lot of uh, money or effort to do that, and I said, don't worry about it, I will find help. I will help you. I promised them that when I came to visit. So she came back to Canada and she asked for some help for her village. And I made her a promise and Guatemala Hope is the carrying through of that promise. We just started out by um, doing fundraising and doing little things as a committee to raise money to help uh, this village. And uh, we started by coming uh, to assess the village and a small group of us, uh, eight of us, came on that first trip. Um, just to have a look-see and to visit and uh, to assess whether we could bring other people from Canada here and uh, what kind of things we could do to help the villagers. The philosophy behind it right now is basically entrenched in education, health and economic sustainability for the families here. Uh, what we want to do is share our expertise, learn from them, and share what we have in Canada in terms of knowledge and um, the ability to uh, create a sustainable income for our families in the village. Uh, so that's our basic underlying goals and all our projects are stemming from those goals. We have about 167 homes in the village. Over half of those are made out of palm branches with leaves, uh, palm leaves for the roofs. Uh, the life expectancy on those homes, if you get 10 years out of one of them, is absolutely a great house. They leak in the rainy season. There's, there's space between each of the palm branches. Um, like Rosa said, when you're here in the rainy season, you just don't get dry. If it's raining, you're wet. It's coming in through the sides, it's leaking through the roofs, and there's just no relief from the rain. Our goal has been to try to help replace some of those homes. We work with the committee that we've established here in the village to determine priority and the greatest needs. The need could be based on the poverty level. It could be the fact that it's a widow with children. It could be an older couple that just doesn't have the resources to be able to, to build a home. And that satisfaction is unbelievable of of moving them from a 12 by 12 or a 10 by 10 little bamboo hut that's leaning over and ready to fall over and the roof is leaking to a spot where I used to love the rain and now I hate the rain because every time it rains back home I think of the families here getting wet and of the agony that that causes and the only thing that offsets that is the new homes we've built. I know that there's at least a few families in this village that now have a roof over their head and a dry place in the rainy season. And that's, 
that just <laughs> well, we're gonna keep hustling for homes because that's that's a long-term benefit for a family that that really goes for years and years and years so cement black homes will last for years and it's so essential it's really key the medical clinic evolved from a dental clinic actually and our first two trips we were able to um, to attract a dentist to come with us so I was his assistant and that's how I got initiated into being able to work with the people on a one-to-one -one basis and then I was able to uh, also do a medical clinic as a nurse uh, without a physician and then this trip in February we were able to attract Dr. Patel who came and was the first physician from Canada to come to our mission. The purpose of this visit is to really identify you know, the problems that this community has and to see whether we can solve it just not by uh, on a temporary basis. The, the problem to, for us to face is to see how we can help them out for the future. If you want to go to a, to a hospital or you want to see a doctor, you have to travel for two hours by truck to get to the nearest town. And then you would have to buy your medicines after that, so many don't even make the trip. Um, small ailments become big ones because they can't afford the truck or they can't afford the medicines, so they don't even bother trying to go. What seems to work well is we, we set up different centers, and, and for example, on this trip we have uh, three different centers. We have a, a waiting area, uh, which is where we take the family history. From there, they'll see uh, the doctor or our nurse practitioner who's with us. Uh, at that station, we also, have, also try to have a nurse there doing some of the recording uh, and also helping out with the exams. And of course, Rosa, our number one translator. Uh, from there, the doctor will diagnose and, and recommend what medicines are needed, and then he'll send them off to the next station. The, the dispensing of the medicine happens at the third station, and um, they'll get their pills. Because most of the medicines we bring down obviously have the English label, we'll put Spanish label on it, but also we give verbal, uh, because 70% of the adult population here is illiterate. So we make sure before they leave the clinic they understand what it's for, how long to use it, um, and they'll get individual little packets of what they need to go home with. You get the impression that you think you're doing some good, but you're not real sure. And then another year goes by and you go, yes, we are making a difference. We're seeing kids that have less of the distended bellies at a younger age, uh, which means there's less parasites, less malnutrition. Um, we're seeing healthier kids, just a little bit of meat on their bone maybe for a change. My first trip three years ago I noticed that some children were a bit uh, malnourished and now uh, through the years I, I've seen them growing so healthy and they're, and they're just so much bigger and happier and have so much energy so it's really nice to see the progress through the years. After last year's two medical trips uh, we recognize the amount of asthma that these people are dealing with and we know that the irritant that they deal with a lot is smoke and dust and uh, the smoke, we've, we've done the assessment of the village from house to house to house and we know that very few people have a chimney on their stove. This is a typical uh, stove in the village. Most of them are in dire need of repair because they are falling apart from years of neglect. Now we are going to reconstruct the same structure and chimney it so that they have better breathing, uh, no respiratory infections, and, and you can see the inside of the building is black from soot. A lot of the houses have no stoves at all, or they're cooking on a wooden box filled with sand. It's unsafe number one, and number two, it's really bad on their health. The ultimate goal is every house has to have a new stove or rebuild their stoves. So it'll take us probably two to three years, but I'm trying to train a local to do them for us instead of us do them. This way he can get paid for his labor, which is better for the whole community. We've also done some health teaching with, with certain groups in the village this time to teach them about smoke and how it affects their children. We're focusing right now on students because we think that the key to have uh, nurses and teachers for this village in the future is uh, through the school. We want to have our own kids to finish the, what they want to take and that way we have our own people here working. We found out that the children in the village only uh, go to school up until grade six and that's a government funded program they don't have to pay 
uh, once they want to, if they want to go beyond grade six, they have to pay tuition, uh, travel, buy a uniform, and it's costly. What we found out is that uh, for $300, it would make that education a reality for them. So we just started spreading the word amongst our family and friends back home uh, and with the board that uh, these students were hungry to be educated at a high school level. And uh, if they wanted to help sponsor a child's education, it would mean a donation of $300. So uh, the first year we uh, sponsored one child when we got the idea. And the following year we did eight. Uh, the next year we did 15 and this year we did 35. So uh, there's a lot of people back in Canada supporting education here in Guatemala and in Trianville. Yeah. Our basic kind of founding principles and our guiding principles when we set up our goals and our objectives are based on our Catholic faith. So many of us that initiated the project um, basically felt a calling from the Lord to help in this third world country in any way we can. We've been really um, extremely fortunate to have other denominations join us. We're here to, to spread the good news through our actions and through our kindness. And that's kind of the message we bring to the people. So we're all brothers and sisters in whatever God we believe in. And I'm just so excited. That message is getting across because uh, yesterday I was asked to go down to one of the evangelical churches and they showed me they need five windows and three doors to be able to finish off their church and here the denominations are very separate the Catholics in the the other denominations do not mix and I thought it was a real sign of our success that we had another religion approach us for help with their building I was really excited about that we're doing something right <laughs> Every time I come to my country or to my village, I go back to the year that I first came back to visit from Canada and I just say, oh my God, thank you so much because I did it. You helped me. I went back, I spread the news that these people needed help and now it's, we, it's, it's something that uh, I, I feel so proud of. <laughs>